Ray, good day. Nice to sit and, and do this. We haven't done it since we um, established a relationship with many a different project. And it's just nice to focus on yourself, mate. I see you've got, you got the Playmaker on, uh, on your breast. That's what we're here to talk about, Playmaker Group. Um, before we get into the heavy hitting stuff, for those who follow the, the voice ardently, they would have seen a Playmaker Group column running back in the last year, I think a bit of this year, um, where we highlighted some of the up and comings. Why was it so important for you from your own perspective? Bit of an obvious question, but I just want to know from your own perspective, why was it so important to highlight some of those up and comings? Um, I think from our point of view, with our experience, I think it, it made sense for us to kind of shine a spotlight on people that not only we were working with, but people that we rated. And, you know, it's quite easy in online for people to write short form stuff and it kind of goes into the atmosphere. What we wanted to do is try to establish somewhere where you can get factual pieces uh, about something which are used as biographical pieces yeah. at the start of people's journey and and also inject you know very much like you're you're doing try to inject some some quality journalism into people at the start of their journey mm -hmm. rather than just when they've made it and people going oh i was there from three years ago but yeah. you know no one was actually it doing, yeah <laughs> yeah so so really it's just you know thank you to you more than anything really because we want to help and, and assist and widen the reach of, of what you're doing and having been fans of what you particularly have been doing we we just want to kind of add to it it, it definitely did that it went down very well actually i mean let's start with um the company pmg for those who don't know what what's the usp what do you do so um playmaker group has been running for since 2010 so nine and a half years um, the company really is an amalgamation of many different things that I used to do when I worked at the BBC. I worked at the BBC for 20 years from 1990 to 2010. And I, did lo I was fortunate enough to do loads of different things. And when I started my own company, there wasn't one particular thing I wanted to do. So I, the reason it's called Playmaker Group rather than any particular one name is we're a, we do a group of things. So that ranges from content creation to event management, tour management, international representation, we do uh, record plugging and servicing, you know, we do quite a wide range of stuff. So that was really the, the concept of it really. Um, it, it, we felt like we had one foot in the mainstream and one foot knowing what the core wanted and try to kind of branch the two or be a conduit between the two. But, you know, we, we are very fortunate that we've got a team, team of like-minded people. My business partner, Yao, who's based up in Liverpool, mm -hmm. He's very much kind of the opposite to me. I just want to kind of get on and do stuff, whereas he's far more thoughtful and he's he's kind of yin and yang. So. Good combination. So, um, what give us give us uh, an overview? What's the big stuff? And we've already talked about the up and coming, the grassroots and stuff. So, what what's some of the big stuff? I know you've got some big things coming up soon. So, the the, the company again, as you, as you mentioned, try to tries to get the balance right between the big overground, big shiny stuff. We've worked for some pretty big international. Let's not be humble now. Let's <laughs> uh, let's not do the humble thing now. Let's let's list a couple of them. We don't okay. have to go through. So, so we work for Glastonbury. We produce a stage at Glastonbury and stage manage and technically manage um, a stage in the Silver Haze area called a Gully Blues stage, which I suppose is a world music stage with a small W. Uh, has played home to a lot of reggae acts, Protégé, Shaggy, uh, from a soca perspective, Bungie Garland's been mm -hmm. on there. So we, you know, we, we like to add our bit where, where possible in that sort of realm. We also work for a festival called Beautiful Days, which is a folk festival in Devon. Mm -hmm. So we've done some of the sort of <clears throat> larger festivals. We also tour manage and have worked with the likes of Jay Huss, Notes, we work internationally with people like Damian Marley, Stephen Marley, Shaggy, Morgan Heritage. So we, we've got quite a good ground in, in um, Caribbean music yeah. in particular. We manage Shorty B, we manage DJ Ace, who's on BBC One Extra. And recently we've just started to produce the Heartless show. We won the, the contract for the Heartless, sh Heartless Crew show mm -hmm. on BBC One Extra, which is great for me because I signed them when I was oh, born. back in the day, yeah. Wow. yeah okay. It's full circle, two, really. Yeah, signed them in 2001. Uh, also played a part in them leaving <laughs> a few years later. I'm sure they remember that. I'm sure they remember that. <laughs> it was the first thing that we spoke about when we, re when we reconvened, so, yeah. so it was good. Um, 
So, obviously, nominees for Grammys coming up, which are major. Talk about what that means to you personally. And I know you've had a Grammy winner before. Um, so let's talk about your whole association with the Grammys, because as far as music is concerned, that's, that's the biggest thing, right? Well, you know, uh, we're being based over here and, you know, obviously growing up and wanting to work in music, you know, your, your aspirations are kind of as to get to as high as possible. And having associations with artists who, or producers who have been Grammy win, winners, is something that probably when we were growing up, we never thought we'd, you know, we would reach that high. No, we've been fortunate in the last few years. As I said, we managed Shawnee, and Shawnee won a Grammy for the work with Morgan Heritage's mm -hmm. album a few years ago. Uh, we've also been involved with Shaggy, and he won a Grammy last year. We've worked on Stony Hill with David Marley, and obviously that won a Grammy. And this year, we've been involved in two projects that have both been nominated for Grammys. So for us, it's been, you know, every year to be at that pinnacle and be involved in, in it in some way, shape or form and work with the people who are managing to produce these incredible bits of, of work. You know, it just kind of, it shows you that the hard work can be worth it. Reggae music, Grammys, it's like we've got the Marleys to thank for that, but there's a whole wider kind of um, element to the genre that's contributing to uplifting the standard of the music and thus the appeal. So. From your point of view, how have you seen things change? Because you've got that whole 30 year perspective. So what are the good things? What are the pros? What are the cons? Of, of just, just the scene, if we go from the Grammys uh, all the way down the and, and just specifically dealing with Caribbean music. Uh, the pros are definitely the quality of the music right. uh, and working with some of the artists can be like every genre. You know, some can be challenging, some can be amazing, some can be quite uplifting. Mm. Uh, I just got off the phone to uh, Grammy winning producer Winter James, who, you know, is somebody who hugely inspires me. Mm. Um, the quality of the work and the humbleness of his attitude really, for me, just kind of sets him apart from a lot of people. In my opinion, he's the best Caribbean music producer in the world today. The high praise. Yeah, I think, I, I think that the way he goes about it, he doesn't just chuck stuff out. He makes all of his music bespokely and you can hear it. And when I know that he isn't going to send me something until it's absolutely ready. Right. And he takes a lot of pride in what he does. Some of the stuff that I think can get better and needs to get better is the business side. Right. In, what, in, what in what aspect? In every aspect, I think. Uh, I think that there's a lot of friendships and a lot of connections, particularly in Caribbean music, and that can be a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing, right. because sometimes you can place more value and worth when it comes from an external perspective, rather than those who are quite close to you, and I believe everybody needs to respect and understands people people's worth. Mm -hmm. And, you know, th this needs to be run as a business. I, I often get told that there is no business or industry in Caribbean music. See, that was going to be my next question. Is that is that what you're speaking about? There's a lack of professionalism, maybe. Well, I wouldn't say professionalism, because I think that a lot of the people who are involved are very, very professional. Right. I, I think it's about worth, and it's about value, and it's about people knowing that, yeah, boy, I know this guy, but you know what? He's cool, he's gonna do it for me as a favor. Like the favor thing has got, has got to kind of be eradicated and people have got to know that this is a service and this is what it brings to what I'm doing mm -hmm. and this is what it's worth, if you like. And that's not just a financial thing, this is about respect, this is about the way people work together. It's about working together as well. I think there's a lot of individual little silos that are around and I think that, you know, there's, there's strength in unity. Was it easy for you then, bearing that all in mind, to go from working for such a big establishment like the BBC to then going out on your own in, in 2010? Was that an easy transition for you to make, bearing in mind all of the things you just um, outlined? No, probably not. I, I never saw myself working for myself, right. um, but I'd reached quite a high level at the BBC and mm. enjoyed my work there and was hugely fortunate to mm. be able to kind of get to a point where I was one of the decision makers, particularly at One Extra, and I then worked at Radio One for, for a year. Um, the big change with working for myself wasn't just about the decision making process, right. but it was more about the influence that I felt I could bring to certain things. So some of the companies that I worked for, 
I was sometimes the only black person there, right. the only black production company in the room. Mm. Uh, and it's always interesting to try to go against the grain in terms of what people's expectations are of you. So where people turn around and say, oh, well, you must know X or Y or this kind of music. You go, well, no, actually, I'm producing a folk festival down the road. Yeah. And, and we enjoy kind of going against the grain. My, my business partner, Yao, is the curator of the Liverpool International Music Festival. Right. So he's the person who puts the whole lineup together, conceptualizes it, and, yeah. and does all the work with it. And it's quite easy for him to be in a in a you know in a minority of one or two of people of color who are who are making those sorts of decisions. Interesting. Interesting. Is that going to change anytime soon? Um, well, it's interesting. Today, I was reading about the um, the uh, problem with ownership. And you know, people not owning outlets, particularly black people not mm. owning outlets. So therefore, no matter what product you make, you're always going to somebody else to decide how to market it and when to market it and where to market it. So I think until that changes, I think it's going to be quite difficult for for the situation as a whole to change. Although I do think now that the the difference is the from producer to consumer, the lineage is not as far as it was maybe 10, mm. 15 years ago. Mm. So. Sometimes you know you can get an artist who goes online and says, "I've got a new single out at midnight," and all of a sudden they can go straight to the people who are interested in what they do. Right. So you look at somebody like AJ Tracy, for example, yeah. who, you know, we have a lot of respect for, a lot of time for, because of the way he's gone about his business, mm. and being a successful young guy who has gone about it the right way. You know, I find those people very inspirational. Sold out two nights at Ali Pali yeah. recently, isn't it? Two, yeah. which is. Um, <laughs> Fantastic. Um, continuing on the theme that you just you brought up, Bordru signing with Rock Nation is that an indictment on what you're talking about? With in terms of, I mean, it's a great association mm. for him, and I guess. But when he looked at the landscape and thought, well, what are my options? Were there any? Well, I think that depends on what he wanted to get out of it. Right. I think Bordru was in a very strong position mm. that not only did the market want him back, and the the value and worth of what he was doing to core and outwardly were was obvious you know any any one of the forty thousand people who were at the national stadium in jamaica on, on you were one of them weren't you right? one of them, yeah. <laughs> uh could see that you know he'd lost none of his charm none of his charisma and you know the trajectory was always going to just going to be upward no one knows the, the the ins and outs of the deal as such so therefore we don't know what's being offered or my understanding is more of a partnership than, okay. a, than anything else so therefore if he feels that Rock Nation can amplify mm. what he's doing, fair play to him. Um, your focus is clearly Caribbean mm. music, Caribbean acts, artists. Um, but not exclusively. Right. But, in okay. Way, in a way. I like, well, let's focus on that for a minute, because I like the fact that you don't, because a lot of people just think Jamaica, reggae, that's it. Mm. They don't really give the kudos and the respect to the rest of the islands and what they're producing in terms of the art that you seem to do. Um, why is that such a conscious thing? Because I'm not from Jamaica, right. primarily. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my parents are from the Caribbean, they're from St. Lucia. Um, my two business partners are both part Jamaican and part from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So Shawnee's um, from Dominica, Yao's part Ghanaian. Um, but also I think that the region is in a position that there is so much influence on each other mm -hmm. But it's that divide and conquer thing where, you know, I grew up in a generation that if you weren't from Jamaica, you were a small islander. <laughs> and and I never understood it. Yeah. I, I never got, but I'm also part of a generation that I, when I used to go to Jamaica for work, my mum used to say to me, be careful out there, it's, it's dangerous out there. And I felt, I've always felt safer in Jamaica than I have in parts of London oh, that yeah. I'm not from. Mm. So I've never kind of seen other than size and scale, I've never seen the difference really between the, the music styles. I think they all have a, a lot to offer. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of work in Trinidad, I think it's pretty similar in terms of the music is there, the creativity is there. Is the business and structure there? Probably not, right. you know. How's it gonna change? I, th I think it's gonna be hard. I think it's gonna take a generation for it to change. I think there's a, there's a new, the new age young, entrepreneurs who are coming into the business have a view on it mm. and I think that they are making it more accessible for themselves which is great but I think it's about having that strength and that unity and that you know being able to work together and know, okay cool you know how do we sort out publishing houses how do we sort out working with 
you know, the DSPs online. And, you know, I think if you don't have that as a collective and you're thinking, well, my artist is number one now, so I don't need anybody else, it's never going to change. Shawnee touched on something recently, which I think is very important, cultural gateway keepers. Mm. Um, I won't get into why he touched on that just yet, but is the the fact that there's a whole new generation that have to kind of target the DSPs, as you, as you so identified, is that changing the landscape in terms of cultural gatekeepers? There aren't too many now. You can actually do your thing without the hindrance of a, 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 an old boys network, if you like, telling you, no, you yeah, can't I, do that I think, anymore. I think a lot of that is still about reference points, though. Right. I mean, I remember, I remember being at the BBC and, and doing an interview similar to this and mm. saying, the station I worked on will never be a station that only plays soccer at Carnival. And um, unfortunately, that's changed quite a lot. Mm. You know, um, people look at, easy easy ways in right. so you know do i really need to play soak in february march april no i'll just wait till it's sunny outside well you know it's the same way when people wanted remix it's 15 years ago and they said yeah it sounds like a sunny thing we'll put it out in july there's not a lot of difference you know so i think that even though it might be easier to get to the dsps and the the, the gateway keepers as you call them right. um those people have to have a, a cultural understanding of what it is they're working in. You know, we had a situation quite recently where we had to say, we had to explain to a company mm. why some of the terminology they used can be misconstrued by the community. And they had absolutely no idea what we were talking about. Wow. They were just like, no, it's not what we meant. I said, yeah, but that's how it's been, you know, looked at. Mm. And they, they just <laughs> never got it. Just no. Quite no. And that's about having a, a, a wide and varied team, mm -hmm. not only age-wise, but, you know, from background-wise, gender, you know, all, all of those sort of things are important because what's, what's important to you or what you might look, overlook, somebody else might go, hang on a minute, I'm, I'm not hugely comfortable with that. And I think it's important, and the way we've tried to build our team is very much having people with different outputs and mm -hmm. different thought processes and giving them the courage to turn, not even the courage, giving them the scope to be able to turn around and say, actually, I think we need to look at this or we need to not focus on that so much or whatever. What's going to, um, I mean, culturally, in terms of exporting the music, it's never been a problem from the Caribbean. Um, I, I guess there's room for growth, though. So what could contribute to an upsurge? How can we make the world more ready for more varieties of Caribbean music? I think it's about understanding markets first and foremost i think that i mean a couple of years ago I, I did a seminar in trinidad which was talking about how the uk market works right. and that's from a live agent to how you get your music on radio right. to you know building up a campaign all that and a lot of people in the room hadn't really thought about it in that way before they just said you know get my music up it's on spotify it's on apple music it's on youtube right. I'm good. And really, you, you need to be thinking longer than that. For example, if you're going to a major radio station mm. in the UK, you should really have your next three records ready. You should be showing them the journey because they might want to jump on that journey and be part of it. You, I, I'm not saying that you should rely on them, mm. but there are assets available to you that if you can sit down and work out exactly how you want to roll out your project, they, they will follow you. So a lot of it is about how you approach people, when you approach them, what assets do you have, why should they care? Mm. You know, that's one of the key questions. What, you've got to give them a reason to care. And if you think that the music being good enough is enough of a reason, you're mistaken. It's got to be more than that. I'm pigeonholing you here to Caribbean <laughs> music. Um, PMG though. The wider perspective, things that you dabble in that maybe wouldn't feature in the voice. Talk about those. So as I mentioned, we, we work on a folk festival, which you know uh, for me is one of the, my highlights of the year. Right. Um, really? Yeah, absolutely. And and the reason it is is because I learn more. Right. I learn a lot there, not only musically, but how other genres work, mm. how other people who work in those genres work. Um, I, we love doing things which are outside of what people expect us to do, as I've mentioned before. So we've just stage managed the Arts and Managers Awards a couple of weeks ago in right. Bloomsbury. And it was really interesting to see 
how that network of people work with each other yeah. and and being in the room mm. when those deals are being done and mm. even though we weren't on the table if you like seeing how it's set up from before when i compare it to a lot of the the awards and other things that we work on yeah. there, there's noticeable differences and we try to take the best bits oh, of, of all of the things we work on and try to bring it back to to what we do i think one of the things that we we try to to show com larger companies we work with. So we've worked with the likes of Universal Pictures, mm. Adidas, Nike, loads of that separate companies, is the value and the worth of the core audience. Right. And I think that sometimes, even on a, a, a film or a, a product that isn't directly aimed at them, it may be of interest to them and don't underestimate the value of that, of that area. Mm. What constitutes growth for you where are you going with pmg well I'm ideally well speak that thought at the foremost of your mind at the moment that you're reluctant to share with us um well growth for us yeah. and and i think i think i'm very fortunate that i have two amazing business partners mm. and one of the things that i'm sort of really wanting to to share in this more than anything is pmg i started pmg but PMG definitely is not just about me. Mm. You know, I have a team of nine people who are incredible. My two business partners, literally, I feel comfortable to, enough to tell them anything, uh, good and bad. We, we argue a lot, mm. but we argue in order to refine what it is we're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And, and I speak to them a hell of a lot. Mm. Um, and I feel like they have they've helped me grow. Uh, and I never feel like it's... I've, I've never in my career ever felt like I've made it, right. whatever that is. Because, yeah. you know, one of the things we're, we're always saying is the best thing that we are involved in is the next thing that we're involved in. And I, it sounds like a cliche, but honestly, like, the, the next thing that we're going to do excites me more than what I did for the BBC 20 years ago. Right. It's like, you know, that's gone. I don't ever want to be the X anything. Do you know what I mean? I, I'd rather just think about, well, what's the, okay, what's the next thing we're gonna do? For growth for us, next year is geographic. Mm -hmm. So we wanna go into territories that are, that we haven't really dabbled in. Uh, and growth for us is also weirdly stability. It's a very sort of volatile market yeah. at the moment. So just, if I could be having this conversation this time next year, then for us, that would be an element of growth. Right. Uh, and risk, I wanna, I want to do stuff that keeps me up at night. I want to do stuff that makes me think, I'm not sure if we can do this, you know. Sounds, sounds big. <laughs> <laughs> sounds big. Um, on, the, on, the, on the subjects of stuff that you're not sure if you can do, <laughs> let's talk about this whole Afro beats and, and dance hall debate discussion mm -hmm. that's going on at the moment. I think it's quite clear. Shawnee, for, for those who are, are, are watching this or listening to this, Sean has written a piece about it in the December issue of Voice newspaper, um, where he's you know articulated his views. What are your own views, though, Ray? I mean, should we even be having this debate? What, what's happening here? I think it's really interesting because I think that it it brings me back to childhood actually. Because when I was at school, primary school and secondary school, it was okay. First of all, you're black. Then after you're black, you're either Caribbean or you're African then if you're in the Caribbean side, you're Jamaican or you're A and other. And then if you're in A and other, you're either from Trinidad or Barbados. And if you're not from them, then you're from one of the other sent something yeah. lot. Yeah. Then if you're African, you're either from Nigeria or Ghana. And if you're not from them, then you're from over there. Yeah. And it's this sort of, this sort of cutting up of, of where you're from and what you're about and who you appeal to. That has just continued 20, 30, 40 years on, which I find nuts if i'm honest the whole other debate yeah, i don't i don't understand it I, I, the, the the two can coexist mm. and and to certain degrees have coexisted uh, and, and and will coexist but who are they talking to the people who are having this debate i'm not really sure who they're talking to because mm. i don't see that one has to win and the other has to lose mm. i don't see why both can't win are we are we at a point where because i've you know everything you just outlined in terms of the the groupings um, is very normal to all of us. Got some African friends who, a couple of years ago, they were like, Tread, I'm just so happy. I can go a dance now. 
and hear some music that you know would I can relate to. I, I, I grew up Jamajirian, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? My whole life having to dance the bashment and dance all there was no choice, um, and now there is. So. For me, maybe that's what's happening. The fact that you can actually go to one or the other night and go to a mixture of the two is what's blowing people's mind. We've got a choice. Well, I see, I look at it from slightly the other side, right. which is I love, the, I love the fact that there are young, predominantly black businessmen and women who are making a decent living and a decent career out of something that they love. Mm. I, I love that. Mm. I love the fact that they can guide their own future I love the fact that they can decide exactly what they want to produce, who they want to work with, how they're going to put it out, what it's going to visually look like. Great. Mm. If you, you know, be the master of your own destiny as much as you can. That, for me, is, is far more interesting and exciting than, you know, did Afrobeats steal dance or loops or, like... Who cares? Who cares? Yeah. Is that I, what I do think is... is I do think that it's about credit as well, though. So it's about if Afrobeat have, have organised themselves in a certain way, mm. then the Caribbean community should look at that and take inspiration from that. And yes, you know, in terms of numbers and demographics, obviously the African diaspora is a lot larger than the Caribbean. However, that doesn't mean that you know the the Caribbean community can't get together and go. Actually, do you know what? We can put this together. We can do this. You know, we can. I find it hugely frustrating that, for example, there isn't a reggae festival. There isn't a Caribbean music festival in the mm. UK. Mm. Why? Why not? Mm. We know the value of the music. We know that people are interested. So what is it that's stopping us having a Caribbean music festival in the UK? Do, do you not do you not rate the One Love festival? Um, I wouldn't class it as a Caribbean music festival. That's I think it has elements of Caribbean music in it, but would I class it as a Caribbean music festival? No. And before anyone says carnival, carnival's not a festival. Yeah, it's not. It's a carnival. That's all. <laughs> it's a distinction. Um, do you think before we get a festival, we'll get a, I don't know, an all-embracing Caribbean broadcast network that knits everything together? Uh, I hope so. Um, that would help, wouldn't it? Again, it's about, it's about ownership, isn't it? It's mm. about platforms, it's about ownership of platforms, it's mm. about people who work at these stations, whether they be radio stations or TV stations, mm. understanding the value of the, and the worth of that culture, not just the music, but respecting the whole culture. And if that doesn't come with it, then you, you kind of... We're going we're gonna to be here in the next 10 years, aren't we? Yeah, what you're going to get is a kind of erasing of... Caribbean culture if we're not careful mm -hmm. because you know when you get second third fourth generation UK British born Caribbean people who don't know where their grandparents and great grandparents came from and have no connection to it mm -hmm. then that subtly starts erasing it <clears throat> and then when your story is being told by people who don't understand your background or your cultural upbringing it makes it very different I cannot tell you the amount of times I've had to say to people in positions of alleged power and influence, no, that's not right, because mm. culturally that's incorrect. That wouldn't happen. Mm. Or, you know, not everything has to be red, gold and green. Keep the link. That's what's important. <laughs> uh, Ray, Playmaker Group, got anything else you want to put out there to the people? Uh, just want to say thank you to The Voice, really. Um, the Voice have supported us hugely, not only in terms of PMG and your work with Shawnee, mm. but you've encouraged us to kind of to be the best version of us we can be. And, you know, obviously we read the paper all the time, read the online content. You know, th there, are, there are struggles in every cool. a media outlet, mm. but the fact that, that you in particular, Joel, uh, um, you know, keep pushing and keep striving and keep pushing that message on, inspires more people than you probably know, and more people than probably kind of come and tell you on a daily basis, oh, you know, we, we, we read with thanks. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate it. I'll give you the brand envelope later. <laughs> Thanks for your time, man. Speak soon, right? Okay. All right, bro. Nice, nice. Bless.